the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in a gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show, with our stars, Irene Dunn, playing the role of Susan Armstrong, owner and editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, her ace reporter. There's an old saying, it's always darkest just before the dawn. Another one, the calm before the storm. We'll pick the second one because it's very calm in George Harvey's office this morning. Almost too calm. Good morning. Hi, Sammy Milan. Sammy, I'm sure that someday you'll grow up to be president. President of what, I don't know, but then it really doesn't matter much, does it? This came in the morning mail. I took it into Miss Armstrong, but she's not in yet. And so you brought it direct to me, knowing that next to Miss Armstrong, I'm the greatest little problem solver this paper ever had. Ah, you better look at this again and tell me what to do with it. By all means, Sammy, hand it over. Hmm, addressed to Miss Daphne Milburn, chair of the editorial department, this paper. After five days, we turn to Cozy Corner, the greatest little poetry magazine in the world. We don't have any Daffy Milburn here, do we? I doubt if anyone has. The name is Daphne. I'll have a look inside. Maybe they got the name wrong or something. Let's see. Uh, printed rejection form. Thank you for letting us see this material, but we regret that it does not fill our needs. We would be pleased to read more of your... and uh, so forth and so forth. And three poems. Ode to a Gray Dawn. The Little Rustic Bridge. City traffic. And all of them typed on perfumed paper. You mean they smell, huh? Uh, I'd say in more ways than one, Sammy. May I read the opening couplet of the one she calls city traffic? Huh? I'd be glad to. Uh, (laughs) I hate to do it. Here it is. Snarl, you traffic, snarl and weave, and let the homeward driver grieve. Like Gabriel, let him blow his horn and get a ticket in the morn. (laughs) That's poetry? The Cozy Corner magazine didn't seem to think so, and I must say I'm inclined to agree with them. Who wrote that stuff? They're signed Daphne Milburn. Well, since there's no Daphne here, I better send the stuff back where it came from. No, no, no. Wait a minute, Sammy. I've got a hunch. I think I'll just keep these for a little while, and I think I know what to do with them. And is it really you? How utterly delightful. Why, Rudolph, where did you come from? Oh, just sauntering about the store. And who knows, I may have been following you. After all, am I not your Columbus, having discovered your great talent? Tell me, have you finished your masterpieces? I've already submitted them, but I haven't heard anything. Excellent, splendid. You will be published immediately. Do you really think so? Oh, it would make me so happy. <laughs> I suppose everyone at one time or another would like to create... Oh. And to think that you were the one who lighted the spark. So long ago. The first night we met at the Gillums, three endless weeks ago. (laughs) And what have I had a chance to do for you since you promised you would call? Well, I I really meant to, but I've been so busy. Why don't we have lunch right now? Well, it isn't lunchtime. And besides, I must be getting back to the office. Oh, that newspaper. But then you own it and you have responsibilities. Yes, that's it. But you will call. You will give me a chance to do more for you. Much, much more, my sweet well, Susan. Yes, Rudolph, of course. I, I, I'll get in touch with you very soon. I'll not sleep a wink until you do. My night shall be a torment, Susan. Remember, we can make beautiful words together. Until then, my little honey bear. Uh, yes, Rudolph. Uh, until then. <laughs> George, sorry I was a little late this morning, but I had some shopping to do. Think nothing of it, boss. Nothing at all. The morning star is shining as brightly as ever. Everything is under control. Is this all the mail I got this morning? Yeah. Uh, were you expecting something special? No. No, nothing special at all. 
just that I usually get more mail than this. Mm -hmm. You want to know something, Susan? What? You have all the earmarks of a young lady waiting for something very special. Well, that's ridiculous. Who would I be waiting for? Maybe you're waiting to hear from uh, Daphne Milburn. What do you know about Daphne Milburn? You know her? I ask you, what do you know about Daphne Milburn? Nothing much. Only that she writes the worst poetry I ever read in my life. Oh, is that so? I almost got hysterical when I read the one about city traffic. Really? Well, it might interest you to know that Daphne Milburn is my nom de plume. That's what I was afraid of. This came in the morning mail. Sammy brought it to me. Naturally, I opened it to see what it was. Let me see that. You'll find the usual rejection slip. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Suppose they found my poems as funny as you did. I wouldn't know about that, but uh, if you're shooting for a highbrow deal like the cozy corner, you're on the wrong track. Are you trying to tell me that you know the right track? That's the general idea. When you're aiming for a supposedly intellectual magazine like that, you just throw a lot of big words together and be sure they don't make sense. I suppose you're trying to soothe my ego. I certainly am not. If you're referring to those three horrible samples of drivel, your ego should be taken out and spanked. Why, you... What in the world has happened to you, Susan? I always figured you for a perfectly normal young woman with both feet on the ground, and then all at once you start making with a dopey posy. Let me tell you something. Rudolph Warren pronounced them superb. And what's more, he told me that I have the greatest natural gift of poetry that he's ever discovered. Uh, aside from pulling your leg, what else does this Rudolph Warren do? He's a regular contributor to Cozy Corner. Besides being recording secretary for the Posy Poetry and Pottery Club of Hillsdale. Well, where did you meet him? On a buttercup? And you needn't be so smug, George Harvey. Nothing of yours has ever been published in Cozy Corner. Huh. I could write for that anemic little rag with my eyes closed and my brain tied behind my back. Oh, is that so? Well, I'd like to see you try it. You would, huh? Okay, I'll do it. And maybe you'd like to make a little wager. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. If they accept my stuff, you take me out for a night on the town. If not, I take you. Is it a bet? Good. You trying to write poetry will be as hilarious as a bull in a china shop. Don't be too sure, Susan. I might turn out to be another Ferdinand. <laughs> on that accident story you covered, Mr. Harvey. Oh, thanks. Let me just put him on the desk. Oh, wait a minute, Sammy. Sammy, I want you to sit down, make yourself comfortable, and do nothing but listen. Okay, but what's the big idea? Just <laughs> listen. Are you ready? I guess so. Herds that thunder under geometric skies, radiant heating with alligator pies, nebulous, shimmering gossamer snails, a horse on a man over sugar plum trails. I just remembered, I gotta get a sandwich for one of the printers. Before you go, Sammy, tell me exactly what that did to you. It made me kind of sick. What was it? It's a poem. It's entitled simply, The West. Oh. Did you understand it? Well, I'm not sure. I thought you said, a horse on a man. But that couldn't be right. That's exactly what I said. Then I don't understand it. Not a bit of it? I know what radiant heating is, but I've never had an alligator pie. Sammy, that's all I wanted to know. I am a success. This little poem will win me a night out. Well, I hope you're right. But I know a lot of people who got two weeks in jail for less. It's been a long time since George Harvey was around this place. Oh, really, Patience? I hadn't noticed. Not that I miss him or anything. It's just that the food bills dropped these last two weeks. Oh, food getting cheaper? No. George is getting scarcer. What did he do now? What did who do now? You know what I mean. You haven't mentioned him for two weeks, and he hasn't been around. Well, he had the nerve to tell me that I didn't know how to write poetry. Is that all? Is that all? How would you like someone to tell you that? They wouldn't have to. I know it myself. A poetry magazine turned my submissions down, and he claims they'll accept his. So what? Well, if they do, he'll he'll be simply intolerable from now on. <sighs> I, for one, won't notice any change. We made a bet, and if he should succeed where I failed, well, I don't know what I'll do. Uh, that's the more poetry you're working on? Yes, that's what it's supposed to be. Right now, I'm really stuck. Maybe I could help. I used to work a lot of crossword puzzles until my eyes couldn't get along with each other. I need a word to rhyme with Cupid. For the life of me, I can't think of one. Stupid. This is a serious love poem. 
when you're writing about an emotion as beautiful as love, stupid has nothing to do with it. I could get you an argument on that, too. But uh, now that we're on the subject, what started this poetry kick? Well, you remember Rudolph Warren. Curly locks? Not curly locks. There's just a slight wave in his hair. Did you notice his mustache and his eyelashes? No, what about them? Eight will get you five. He puts them up every night before he goes to bed. Well, whether he does or not, he's a magnificent poet, and he's giving me a great deal of encouragement. Oh, if you want my advice, and you probably don't, pick the lesser of two evils, which in this case would naturally be George. And what makes you so sure of that? Yeah, I'm not sure. But at least if George starts chasing you, it won't be with a butterfly net. <laughs> And just what makes you so revoltingly happy this morning, George? Take a look, boss. A great big long look. Just received this from Cozy Corner, no less. What is it? As the exponents of a familiar game of chance would put it, read it and weep. <laughs> we are pleased to inform you of the acceptance of your poem, The West. Huh? Enclosed, please find check. May we look forward to more of your submissions. <laughs> Not bad for a young chap who worked his way up from Mary Had a Little Lamb, huh? Well, aren't you going to congratulate me? Well, yes, of course. Congratulations, George. Thank you. May I inquire the amount of the check? Well, it seems that their rates, completely unlike everything else these days, have not gone up. Uh, Fifty cents. Fifty cents? Mm -hmm. Why, that's an insult. Surely you don't intend to write anything else for that amount. I had no intention of writing anything else for any amount. This was merely to prove my point and win a bet. Remember? You have a copy of the poem you sold? By a strange coincidence, it just so happens that I do. Uh, care to browse a little? Thank you. Heard the thunder under geometric sky. Radiant heating with alligator pie. Nebulous, shimmering, gossamer snails. A horse on a man over sugar plum trail. Like it? What does it mean? I haven't the faintest idea. Like I told you, just throw a lot of eight-cylinder words together without making sense, and they love it. <laughs> a horse on a man. Well, so what? They bought it, didn't they? Uh horse on a man. I wouldn't be able to look anyone in the face if I'd written that. Well, maybe not, but I'm looking you in the face, Susan, and reminding you of our bet. Oh, I remember our bet. Good. How about tonight? A horse on a man. Okay, okay, I'll change it. This very night. Yes, how will you change it? Tonight, my dear boss lady, it will be a horse on you. Now, back to our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray in the second act of our story. Tonight, Susan is picking up the check at the Ming Room of the General Grant Hotel. It's a big check, too. George has seen to that. He's had everything from soup to nuts and halfway back. And now, there's soft music and Susan. You know something, Susan? I could go on dancing with you for a you just about have. It's 11.30. Do I detect a note of boredom and you in my strong, manly arms? Yes, but I'm a little tired, George. It's been a long day and a big night. It has that. I'll admit that when you pay off a bet, there's no doubt about it. The family trait. Your family raised some of the nicest traits I've ever known. Thank you. I'll tell you what. As soon as this number wears itself out, I'll take you home and then you can spend the rest of the night dreaming about me. Oh, that'll be just wonderful. Yeah, that's what all my girlfriends tell me. I'm a regular dreamboat. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <sighs> Sounds as if the number had worn itself out. Yeah, that was too bad. But I gave my word, and we Harveys never go back on our word. Family trait. Admirable, I'm sure. Susan, Susan, my darling, don't tell me it's you. But it is in the beautiful flesh. Oh, you goddess, you. How are you, my sweet? Well, Rudolph, how delightful. What are you doing here? Oh, I come here quite often. Many's the time I've composed several quatrains while dancing. Oh, I feel that the arts are so alive, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. Th this is George Harvey, Rudolph Warren. Uh, pleasure. Oh, pleasure, indeed. And George is my best reporter. Really? 
Oh, one would never think of him as a reporter. One would be more apt to take him for, say, a wrestler. I used to do a bit of it in my time. Uh, shall we? <laughs> George is such a kidder. Such an impulsive sense of humor. Yes, hasn't he? Oh, but tell me, my pet, have we heard from your poems? The cozy corner rejected all three of them, Rudolph. You don't mean it. And a printed rejection slip at that. Barbarians. I promise you my kitten I'll take steps. Uh, George sold them his first submission. Uh, George? Yes, it's coming out in the next issue. Well, I declare, this intrigues me greatly. A reporter, a wrestler, and now a poet. <laughs> However do you do it, George? I'm a child prodigy and I never grew up. Yes. <laughs> of course, you'll reprint his poem in the star. Oh, well, I really hadn't thought about it. Oh, but you must, Susan. It's our obligation, you know, to nurture all our young, tender poets. Oh, well, I suppose so. Oh, but enough shop talk. Promise me, Pigeon, that I may have the next dance. Well, Pigeon is tired, and I'm taking her home. Oh, what a pity. Well, it's been so nice. I'll keep in touch with you, Bon Bon. Oh, brother. So embarrassed, the least you could have done was to be civil, George. Well, you're lucky I wasn't. What do you mean? If I were ever civil to a guy like that, the first thing you know, I'd start a civil war. And you needn't be slamming those phone books around. You're going to do it, and that's all there is to it. You got this stupid idea from that Shelley on a half shell last night, didn't you? Maybe, but it doesn't matter. A poem a day as an added feature will help the morning star. You will have your first offering in the composing room before the deadline tonight. And you will have another every day thereafter. I can take you to court. That's not in my contract. Law says I don't have to do any work for nothing. What law? Well, I don't know, but I'll find it. It's around here somewhere. Well, just in case there is a law, you'll be paid for the poems at the prevailing rate. Yeah? How much? Well, you should know, Lord Byron. Fifty cents a day. This goes in the paper? That goes in the paper. The Morning Star? Oh, this is worse than the other one. As a critic, Sammy, I'm afraid your judgment is a little immature. Just how do you go about weighing the merits of a poem? Well, the other one didn't mean anything, and this one don't make no sense at all. There's probably a nice distinction there, even if I don't quite see it. I might as well run that down to the composing room, Sammy. The eager presses wait. That does it, George Harvey. I've a mind to call my attorney. By noontime, he'd probably have you in jail for wrecking a paper I've spent the best years of my life trying to build. If you'll put your top back on and listen for a moment, you'll realize it was your idea. Just listen to this. This trash. A little bird, hi-ho, Sandusky, oh, hi-ho, rocks the trees, a shady dell. The little bird couldn't fly. He fell. Well, the world's lowest moron wouldn't write anything like that. Probably nobody even noticed it. Oh, they didn't. The switchboard already has 50 calls this morning wanting to know what we meant by that poem you called. Where's that thing? Oh, here it is. Entitled N-U-R. It's pronounced Nur. Might I be so bold as to ask what Nur is? Yes. Nur is the stuff that gathers in the cuff on a man's trousers. And that's what you name this, um, if you'll pardon the expression, poem... I wasn't trying to make sense, you know that. I did it out of spite, and I'm sorry. What do you want me to do, start bleeding? It's easy enough for you to sit there. Say you're sorry. Hello? Am I speaking to Miss Susan Armstrong, the editor of the Morning Star? Uh, This is Susan Armstrong. Well, I'm Harriet Bakewell. I'm president of the Posey Poetry and Pottery Club of Hillsdale. Oh, yes, Miss Bakewell. Um, I suppose you've called about the poem in this morning's paper. Yes. No, oh, blessed little Hilldale. Oh, a new and gentle voice has risen amongst us. I'm not sure I understand you, Miss Bakewell. Are you trying to tell me you liked it? Oh, no. No, I adored and worshipped it. What a beautiful subconscious the author must have. Oh, will you tell me who created it? Uh, George Harvey. George Harvey. Oh, is he a recluse? He's a reporter. Oh, simply delightful. We're having an inspiration hunt tomorrow. Al Fresco. That's outdoors, you know. In the woods north of town. It would be simply divine. 
And if Mr. Harvey were to taunt her with it, and uh, perhaps tell us his secret thoughts when he wrote a nurse. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, I think that would be splendid. I'm sure Mr. Harvey would just love to join your group. Oh, hey, what's going that on? That would be delightful. Now, we'll all meet at the entrance to the North Woods around two-ish. Uh, we'll consider it a day, sir. Uh, yes, we will. Goodbye, Miss Bakewell. Oh, au revoir. Would you mind bringing me up to date on whatever it is you just decided for me? Uh, George Harvey, poet. This is just too good to be true. The Poetry, Posy, and Pottery Club of Hillsdale has just stamped you with its seal of approval, George. That was the president on the phone. Well, if this is a rib, I don't like it. In fact, I don't like it if it isn't. It's all quite simple. You've been discovered as the bard of Hillsdale. So tomorrow afternoon at 2, we drive out to the North Woods where your worshipping public awaits you, ready to hang on your every inspired word. Oh, no, you Oh, yes, I do. For some idiotic reason, George, Harriet Bakewell thinks you're a genius. And that misguided opinion will save the morning star from disgrace. So it's hi-ho, and off to the woods we go. There they are, George, waiting for you. Yeah. Now get that sour look off your face. Smile like a poet. You know this is the same as blackmail, don't you? Oh, shush. Pull over there and stop. And this is George Harvey. Oh, my, what a big, handsome boy he is. Yes, isn't he? Oh, I'm uh, Harriet Bakewell. I'm not at all surprised. Susan. Susan, my little hummingbird, how enchanting. Well, Rudolph, I didn't expect you to be here. Oh, knowing that you were to be here, Susan, not even chains could have kept me away. Attention, all! Attention, quiet, please. Uh, we're a few minutes late as it is, uh, so we'll all tramp to Lover's Rock. I've selected that idyllic site where we can sit at Mr. Harvey's feet and let his golden words flow over us. While he explains the inner meanings of nerves. Susan, I could choke you. Mr. Bamboo, fellow poets, the afternoon, well, the day. Well, you see, the little bird in my poem isn't exactly a bird at all. In fact, I wasn't even thinking about a bird. I, but I'm thinking about a bird right now. Where's that Rudolph and Susan, Miss Bakewell? Well, I believe they like a little back on the turn. They'll be here soon. Do go on, we beg you. Uh, well, Sandusky, Ohio, came into my mind at that moment. I, I missed a train there once. And, oh, isn't that fascinating? And I, uh, I used the rocks and trees and stuff because, well, I figured every poem should have rocks and trees and stuff. And, and that beautifully exquisite line about the little bird who fell. Oh, what is the hidden meaning of that? Uh, well, you can take that any way you want. It's just a good idea to learn to fly before you take off. And I'm taking off right now after Susan. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, but they'll be along and do come back, please. Oh, get lost. <laughs> Let me go. You're Diana. You're Aphrodite. You're Venus. Just please. one kiss, please, now, from your honey stop lips. Stop it. Stop it, I tell you. I'll scream. And every denizen of the woods will answer your golden call. George. Just one, please. George! George, help me! You cry in vain, my delightful. That oaf oh, is far uh, away. That's where you're wrong, Rudolph. Meet the oaf. Oh, oh, George. Thank heaven you're here. Now, just one more, Susan. He's still on his feet. Huh. There. George. The soft grass will probably do a lot for his subconscious now that I've taken care of his unconscious. <laughs> oh, horror! Oh, Mystic a brute, Lord! Miss Bakewell, it's a pleasure. Oh, you're a brute, a Neanderthal man. Oh, well, you couldn't be a poet. You're so right. Oh. Come on, Susan, let's go before the men in the white coats come and throw a net over us. <laughs> Our 
our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back with us in just a moment. Well, here it is, boss. All ready to go for tomorrow's edition. What are you talking about? My poem. What else? I quote, Poetry is a wonderful thing. This is the theme of the song that I sing. But never again will I pen me a verse, because most poems are bad and uh, my stuff is worse. (laughs) Oh, you know something, George. What? I'll buy that. My price has gone up. It's more than 50 cents. Mm -hmm. 50 cents and uh, one special kiss. Poet Harvey, you have yourself a deal. Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to join us then. <laughs> <laughs>